All right, so we're going to talk about 7-7, Exponential Growth and Decay. Our learning objective is to model exponential growth and decay. So this is broken up into two parts, the growing part and the decaying part. So um, circle of life. You live and you get grow and then you start shrinking as you're older. So anyway, our um, key concept is focusing on exponential growth. So this is just the growth part. Um, <clears throat> we have our function. Y equals A times B to the X. A has to be bigger than zero, and B has to be bigger than one. If B is not bigger than one, it is not growth. All right, so just to reiterate, A has to be bigger than zero, and if you think about that, if A were negative, then this graph would not be going up in quadrant one, he would be getting more and more negative down in quadrant four. Um, B has to be bigger than one. It's not going to grow if B is not greater than one. All right, so the equation, and this is a very important part, y equals a, B to the, a times b to the x, where a is your initial amount. amount. It is what you have when x is equal to zero. Usually that's when time is equal to zero if we're talking um, population or money. Uh, the base is the growth factor, so make sure you highlight the growth factor. It's how quickly you're growing by. And exponent is the little guy. Well, guys, the exponent. It's got the baby. All right, so make sure you guys sketch this graph. Um, one component I want you guys to note is that our y-intercept is right here. It crosses the y-axis at A, and that corresponds with the A in your equation. All right, so let's apply this. <coughs> so let's try a nice little word problem. All right, suppose that in 1985 there were 285 cell phone subscribers in a small town. The number of uh, subscribers increased by 75% each year after 1985. How many cell phone subscribers were in the small town in 1994. Write an expression to represent the equivalent monthly cell phone subscription increase. So we need to so we need to establish a zero point. So when do we want to establish time as starting? So it's going to start now. All right, so ask yourself, what year am I going to establish as time starting? So it starts in when? Year zero? This current year is 2014. When do we want to start time equal to zero? And my suggestion would be start it when we have data. So what's the first starting point where we have data? Yeah. So in 1985, we're going to establish our time starts in 85. It's a good year. Back to the Future was out. 
Michael Jackson was awesome. Beastie Boys were just hitting the scene. So 1985, we're gonna imagine time starts then. Uh, there were 285 cell phone subscribers. We're gonna increase 75% each year after 1985. How many cell phone subscribers were in the small town in 1994? So in 1994, how many years later is 1994? So 85, 95 would be 10 years, but it's 94, so it is 9 years. My suggestion to you guys when you're starting a word problem is to write all your information down and put a question mark when you don't know things. And that's okay. All right, so if we go back and look at exponential growth, we need to start out with um, our equation here, where y equals, we've got our initial amount, our base, which is our growth factor, and our exponent. So we're going to go apply that right here. So y equals a times b and I'm going to say, say t for time instead of x. So if we go y, what's our initial amount of subscribers? 285. This b part is a little bit trickier because we grow at a rate of 75%. So, but let's take a look at this because if we're growing by 75%, Always make sure when you're using percentages, you write them as a decimal. So I can't just say times 75. I have to move the decimal place to the left two places and use it as 0.75. So let's just take a look at, just so we can establish what our growth factor is, let's take a look at what it's going to be in one year because we know we we grow at a rate of 75 percent so if i have 285 and i times that by 0.75 213.75 so is that what i write here 213.75 And I'm asking, in 1986, do I have 213.75 subscribers? Because I took 75% and I multiplied it by original amount. So I went from 285 to 213. Does that make sense? All right, so this applies to money, this applies to um, any growth, you want to look at, here's what we missed. If I start with 85, I've calculated what 75% is, but I need to add in my original amount. So when you're looking at your growth factor, you need to include one is like 100% of the people who signed up plus 75% who added on. So your equation truly is y equals 285, 1.75t. So now we have the equation. We can put in year 9 and get out our answer. So I'm going to refer to senior calculator because the ninth power of 1.75, I do not, crazy enough, I do not have memorized. So 285 times, I'm going to go parentheses, 1.75 to the ninth power, close parentheses, equal sign, 
43,871. Yes! But it's, we got some decimals here. We can't have a 0.98 person, nor can we have a 0.99 person. We gotta round to the nearest person. So we can easily say that this is 43872. Let's just write that down. We'll call them subscribers. All right, next we're going to talk about compound interest, and I skipped this right from your glossary. Compound interest is interest paid on both the principal and the interest that has already been paid. And I put an example because it's so helpful to have that. An initial deposit of $1,000 at a 6% interest rate with interest compounded quarterly the function y equals 1,000, 0 0.06 divided by 4 because 4 quarters raised to the x power gives the account balance y after x years. So we're going to look at problem number 2. And we are um, actually going to answer the got it problem. So we're going to suppose the account in problem number two pays interest compounded monthly. How many times per year is monthly? Yeah, it's 12. It's not a trick, I promise. What will the account balance be after 18 years? So our T is equal to 18. So when we put our little equation together, we have A equals P1 plus R over N to the NT. So our we want to know our amount. And our principal from the original problem is oops, two thousand dollars. So P is two thousand. One gets to stay of one. Yay, yeah, he's so happy. Our rate is 4.5%, but we need to write that as a decimal, so move it over two places. Divided by the number of times a year we compound it. We decided that was 12. Raised to the n, there's a 12 again, times the, no, the number of years. Okay, so when I put this in my calculator, because all this is is a calculator chuck. So when I put this in my calculator, I'm going to go from the inside out because order of operations say parentheses first, so I'm going to do parentheses first. I'm going to actually do this division first, and then I'm going to add 1. So I'm going to go 0 0.045 divided by 12 equals plus 1 equals raise it to the 12 times 18 power, so to the parenthesis. I do, anytime I'm messing with exponents, I parenthesis almost everything. Because if I don't parenthesis, then it will do the wrong order of operations. So 12 times 18, so I go equals, and then now I'm going to want to multiply it by 2,000. I get $4,489.01. So 4489.01. And that is dollars 4489.01. Booyah. Awesome possum. After 18 years. We're going to do the same thing with exponential decay. So you don't have to rewrite. I do want you to rewrite a sketch. Um, you don't have to rewrite all of this information, just what I highlight. So let's highlight in blue. So you definitely want to keep.
key concept, exponential decay. You want to rewrite this. And you want to write this value here. In order to be decay, your decay factor, this little b, has to be between 1 and 0. And then the base is called the decay factor. And then here's that 1. In growth, we did 1 plus the percent. But in decay, we're going to do 1 minus because it's decay. It's getting smaller, so that's where the minus comes from. Okay. So you don't have to rewrite anything else. Just exponential decay, the equation, and that b is between 0 and 1. Because it's going to ask you to identify growth or decay. And our decay factor has to be between 0 and 1 in order for it to be decay. All right, so our, what we're going to do is we're going to find atmospheric pressure at an altitude of 5,000 meters. And that comes from this problem 3. So let's read the kilopascal is a unit of measure for atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure at sea level is about 101 kilopascals. For every 100 meter increase in altitude, the pressure decreases 11.5%. What is the approximate pressure at an altitude of 3,000? And they found that our equation is y equals 101, because that's what it is at sea level, at zero. And then times 0.885, because that is what you get when you subtract 1 minus 11.5%. So at 5,000, how many 1,000 meter increments is this? So if I was at zero and I was making a graph, how many increments of 1,000 are there before I get to 5,000? Not a true question. It's five. So we want to put in five for our x value. So let's do that on La Calculadora. So 0.885. To the 5 times 101 equals 54.83. At 3, it was 70. Did it want us to round to the nearest kilopacks? It doesn't say. Why do you subtract the percent decrease from 1 to find the decay factor? So we better answer that. So let's do it in a complete sentence. You subtract 1. Because... The decimal equal to a hundred percent is one. 